Hey, what's going on friends and fans? Ryan Dorn here, your friendly neighborhood sales coach. And this month we're focusing in on what you can do to cut through the clutter in a world of noise and distractions. So there's three main things that I love to focus on today. First, you need to be exceedingly relevant. We'll talk about it. Second, big problem, you need to be very brief. And then the third thing that we're gonna talk about is that you need to be consistent. Hey, if these videos are helpful to you, down below, like it, share it, tell some friends about it, and it lets YouTube know that we're doing a great job. And hey, don't forget, subscribe to the channel as well. Okay, the first point that we wanna talk about is being relevant. I think we all would agree that generic emails are not as effective as they once were because everybody out there is sending emails. So being exceedingly relevant is about beating stranger danger. So I've talked about it a lot uh, when I speak at national conferences and things like that. Since birth, you've been taught not to engage with strangers. So why would the adult side of stranger danger be any different? It's actually not. So one of the fastest ways that I like to warm up clients is by liking and commenting on things that they post on LinkedIn or on social media. Now, I'm a huge fan of doing business communications on LinkedIn. And the reason is because when I like or comment on something that's placed on LinkedIn, guess what? LinkedIn sends that person an email that says, hey, Ryan Dorn commented on what you posted. Would you like to join that conversation? So LinkedIn is putting my name into their inbox. One of the other things you can do is on their social channels, like and comment, um, maybe, hey, great idea, thanks for sharing, or wow, that was a great article, I'm gonna share that with my team. Things like that that you can do to get your name in front of someone so that when they do get an email from you, they're a lot more likely to pay attention because, hey, you're not a stranger to them. Now, I know this works, friends, because I have people on a regular basis say, thanks for liking my stuff, thanks for commenting on my stuff. Being exceedingly relevant to folks, friends, that is really important in beating stranger danger and cutting through the clutter. It's kind of like going to a party and knowing somebody as opposed to going to a party and being like, I don't really know anybody, but I'll kind of look around and see if I can make a friend. Kind of hear the angst in my voice even thinking about that. All right, so the first thing that you want to do to cut through the clutter is be exceedingly relevant to the people that you're emailing. All right, the second is a real struggle, and that is being brief, be brief. Now, there's a lot of problem with this because most salespeople wanna follow an age-old philosophy, which is you only have one chance to make a first impression. Well, I think that your grandma or your mom or whoever, your auntie was right when they told you that, but also remember in the digital age, we probably are gonna reach out to folks five, six, eight times before we get a lot of traction with them. And that is okay. See, a lot of you, you give up after three or four attempts when we all know, well, not all of us, but I'm sharing with you today that on average, it's gonna take six to eight attempts to get through to somebody in the sales business. It really doesn't matter if you've got a special offer, if you're offering something for free. I mean, I've tried it all. What I want you to recognize is if you're relevant, which was our first point, and then you're really brief, people can absorb smaller bits of information faster. So for example, if the subject line was quick note for you, and the body of the email was, hi, Julie, um, I've been reaching out to you about this or about that, love to connect for a brief chat, maybe you mentioned five quick minutes or something like that, you may not get a response to that particular email, but putting in a point of relevancy, as we've talked about before, mentioning the names of other clients can help as well, but you'll follow Ryan's rule of three and three, you're almost always gonna get further faster. That rule is three words in the subject line, three sentences max. Just remember now, it's gonna take a little bit of a strategy, it's gonna take a little bit of a plan here to get through to somebody. Don't expect to get through on the first attempt. It's actually pretty rare because of point number three, which is be consistent. See, a lot of salespeople, what they'll do is they'll try real hard for say a couple of weeks, or they'll try real hard maybe even for a week or for a few days. And then what you do is you give up because you think, gosh, I don't wanna be one of those annoying salespeople that constantly sends people information. Well, but you're not. What you're doing is you're sending relevant, brief communications 
and you're being consistent. Like for example, I reach out every three business days. Go figure. Everything I do wraps around the rule of three. So maybe every three business days, you're reaching out, different subject line, different points of relevancy, different examples of clients, keeping those emails brief, keeping them short. Just remember, friends, people tend to scan emails. And if they see a real long email, a lot of times they're like, oh, I'll get back to that later. Then it does the inbox drift. You don't want that. Instead, you want to be relevant, you want to be brief, follow that rule of three and three, and then you want to be consistent. I want my prospects and clients to know that if they don't respond, it's all right, I'm going to come back to them again. Now, after 10 or 15 attempts, clearly something is not right. Maybe you got the wrong person, maybe the offer doesn't make sense. I mean, there's all kinds of different scenarios. Normally, though, after four or five outreaches, Normally, I'm going to get something like, hey, go jump in the river or email me information, something like that. But what you want to consider is what can you do to be exceedingly consistent with your messaging? Never forget, friends, as a professional salesperson, you are doing to that person, to the client or potential clients, you're doing to them what they hope their salespeople are doing to their potential clients. They're hoping that their potential salespeople to their clients are going to be brief, they're going to be consistent, and they're going to be highly relevant. So friends, when you think about a world that we live in full of crazy distractions, I truly believe if you're relevant, if you're brief, and if you're consistent, and you do those three things, friends, you will get further faster than salespeople that are out there spraying and praying. You know them. They're spraying a bunch of emails, and then they're praying to the heavens that they're going to get some type of response. You're better than that. We're better than that. And we can all grow if we pay attention to these little tips and tricks, the fine-tuning of your sales strategy. Now, do you have a sales strategy? That could be something is like, is it written out? Like, what are you going to do to try to cut through the clutter? Or are you just kind of winging it? Never forget, friends, I've said it a thousand times, professionals practice and have a strategy. Amateurs, they wing it. If sales was easy, guess what? Everybody be doing it and they're not. We're not crazy for being in the sales business. It's a great job. It'll feed your family for a lifetime. Hey, love to come to your office and motivate your sales team. Love to come and speak at your national conferences. Reach out to me over at RyanDorn.com. All right, get out there and sell something to make us all proud. We'll see you next week.